Hello and welcome to the Foundry's Furnace Core tutorial for wire removal. Wire removal removes wires and cables from a scene. Many effects movies feature complicated stunts that require an actor to be suspended by wires for their safety. These wires need to be digitally removed. There are many ways of doing this, including painting the wires out frame by frame and replacing large parts of the background to cover the wires through the use of a clean plate. The method used depends on the type of image under the wire. Often a clean plate is not shot during the filming and the compositor is left to actually create one by merging together unobstructed pixels from many frames, which can be problematic if the background is constantly changing, like a cloudy sky or a water scene. Furnace Core's wire removal plugin should make the process of wire removal much easier. It is particularly good at removing wires over heavy motion blurred backgrounds or wires over smoke, dust, or clouds. It can be used to remove each wire in a sequence or to quickly create a clean plate and then be tracked into place. Wire removal uses GME to perform this cleanup. For more information on GME and LME, please refer back to the Furnace Core introductory video. Before you start the tutorial, show down the relevant scripts and image sequences from the Foundry website. Once you have done this, please open the Start Here script and we can begin. Once you open the Start Here script, you should find the actual image sequence we're going to be working with and the wires we're going to be removing from the scene. If we just press stop on the timeline and go to frame 1, you can actually bring up the node and have a look at the parameters of this. We select the actual image sequence and bring up the node. I'm using the tab function to bring the node required, in this case wire removal. You can bring up the node whichever way you feel most comfortable. Now the wire removal node has two inputs. We have the source input which should be connected to the actual image sequence and we also have the clean plate input. And there's no need to get the clean input now as we will cover this option in a later tutorial. Once you've connected the source input, you should see the actually widgets appear on the screen. We have the wire widget, the on-screen controls, and the parameters that come with the actual wire removal node. Now, before we start to move the widget and position it over the wires, let's just have a look at the actual on-screen controls and see what they do. First of all, we have the on-screen hiding, so we can actually choose which parts of the actual widget we wish to actually view. Just view the points, you can view nothing, or you can view the points and the lines capable of encompassing the widget and the wires. You also choose the amount of points that you wish to have. By default it's to three, but you can just have two. So you have two individual points to move across, or you can have five for different shape wires. Bendy ones, you should keyframe all together. So we're gonna right click on the node and set the default again, so we're back to the beginning everything's been reset. We also have the option to actually set user keyframes and to delete user keyframes. So if we set one, it should turn blue, we use the delete one to take away the keyframe. We also have the snap to option. So once we position this over an actual wire and if we press the snap to button it should actually get a close lock on the wire and encompass these actual lines which should go around the actual wire itself to fit the wire perfectly. We must have the ability to track backwards, to step back with the different keyframes, track forwards, and the option of a smart track. And I'll explain this in a minute. We must have the option to delete keys in different directions, delete the current key, delete the key forward, delete all the tracked keys that we've placed, or in certain circumstances, delete all the keys and information that we already have. If we press this, we get a warning bar recurring, saying this will delete all user track keyframes. When we proceed, we'll click yes. Now we know what the on-screen controls do, let's have a look at some of the parameter ones. We also can set the output over here, by default it's the source, we can actually set it to the repair, just see the wire mat, and just have the alpha mat embedded in the sequence as well. The rest of the parameters will come to as we progress along with the tutorial. So let's go ahead and maximize the screen, so we have all the workspace available and nothing is wasted. You can see we have the on-screen controls over here, and I can move them around. 
change the sizes of them so they actually fit on the screen. I'm just going to take this to the first one, the secret, which is going to be this one portraying across the sky. I'll just get that in. Zoom a bit closer in to see exactly what we're doing. As you can see, what I'm trying to do is actually get the middle of the widget to align with the actual wire itself. You see, with three point wires, this is much easier. If I had five point, there'd be too many points to actually take into account. So now I'm happy with them, that's been aligned. What I can now do is actually use the snap two. I press this. It should actually snap to the wire and give a much more controlled fit.